your guy. My guy? Me? Many people. What guy. did you post okay. on SoundCloud? <laughs> Post Malone exposed and how himself, how he blew up. What did you post on SoundCloud? White yes, Iverson. Sir. White Iverson, yes, sir. And how soon do people start listening? Instantly. Like, how old were you? You let me, I was 18, yeah. You graduated high school? Yes, sir. The night it was done, I was like, let's just fucking put it up. What's the worst that could happen? How weird is it that like all of a sudden kids started passing this thing around to the point that you were getting like a million streams in a month? It very much had to do, he's an Atlanta guy named Fat Man Key. And he was there at the studio whenever I dropped it. He was buddies with Wiz. And well, what did Fat Man Key do? You put it up on SoundCloud. He tweeted SoundCloud. it. He, or he oh. sent it to Wiz. And then it just went fucking nuts. And then, like, all these guys, Waka Flocka, like, everything. Like, people I fucking looked up to for so long were just, like, FaceTiming me in the middle of the night. And I was like, yo, what the? Like, this shit's crazy. What did you post on SoundCloud? White yes, Iverson. Sir, White Iverson. First yes. and foremost, and how man, soon shout do out people to start listening? Howard Stern. For such an innocent question. Yeah. That was just so funny. <laughs> well, what did Fat Man Key do? That was, was that? that was that was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so interesting to see this, and we can go like we can slice this down in so many ways. But I remember when Post Malone was blowing up, and you know, I think there was some industry plant conversations for by some people around him one one way or another. And my thing that I did have, you know, I'm not big on the industry plan thing, but the thing that I did have was he didn't just post this shit and Wiz Khalifa knew about it within 24 hours. You know what I mean? That didn't make mm. sense to me. Yeah. It's no way I, nobody <laughs> would. Like, I, okay. You could tell me it's the hottest song in the world. It's no way like it works like that. So it's like he had to be connected with somebody, with some people. I didn't know exactly who the people were, um, but I knew that it was more than just, oh, I made a dope song. I threw it up on Twitter, Twitter of all places. And the way my rally worked, the, nah. It's like, that didn't make sense. So I'll start with that statement, but I want to hear what you got to say. No, nah, I mean, first off, you know, shout out to Key, bro. Because Key, especially with a lot of the SoundCloud artists of that time, he was always like the secret puzzle piece for a lot of them. That I, I always wonder if we only got to hear about it because we were here in Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, you know, the... The, 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 the information hits the streets a lot faster, but it's like, bro, from like, I mean, now we know Post Malone to so like people like Lil Yachty, fucking Rico Nasty, Uzi, Trippy Red. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of those like really early, like, SoundCloud popping rappers, bro. Like, he had a hand in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. So it's it's crazy, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, he he been, just, he got some some great A&R roots, you know what I'm saying? Or great A&R um, skills. But the second thing I think about with this is, it's so funny how, like, that a lot of things they were doing at that time were just like really early stage influencer campaigns. You know, like that was pretty much like an industry influencer campaign where like he yeah. tweeted it so Wiz yeah. Khalifa would see it and then he would tweet it and it just spread from there. Right. But like they didn't understand it that way back then because I remember this was around the time when I was managing the rapper I was managing. I remember us looking at Post Malone popping at the time like damn like, like you said like how did he do this shit? <laughs> and literally the very next day all these different celebrities are, are posting it. And then it makes sense, it's like you had this person uh, behind you that knew all these other celebrities and people and influences in the game that could help you spread it out. So it looks like it's moving a lot faster, or actually it moves a lot faster than it would have organically if you were kind of doing it on your own. Yep. So, I mean, that probably really just strengthens his industry plant um, argument. Just, I, I think not from the level that people were thinking of it. People tend to think of the industry plant argument as like, oh, you know, it's this music exec with a lot of money and power helping you out. But like, what if it's just another artist that has a, a lot of other popping artist homies that just like you? You know what I'm saying? He just, like, how many times have you heard that story? Artist A likes artist B and tells all his friends about artist B and they all help that artist blow up just because they fuck with him. Does that, you know, it's like, that, that's what this sounded like to me, you know? Yeah. See, the, and that's the thing, you know, that's part of why I like the industry plant stuff gets my nerves because people, the, what the idea of it is like this super orchestrated thing, mm -hmm. right? Like we're, we're in a room, a dark room with some hoods on, with the map and how we gonna lay this shit out and trick the world. Yeah. And then bam, <laughs> there goes the artist. It's like, it's not that, dog. 
Like there might be okay, you can connect some dots because there's somebody in the industry that knows this person, mm -hmm. and they and then they do some stuff. But also that happens all the time, and that just doesn't work out like that. Exactly. By, by the way, so right? much of the time, so much, right? <laughs> Most of the time, by and large, not even close. But it goes back to the importance of relationships, right? Mm -hmm. Connections. No matter what, how long you move, and how strong you are at what you're doing. You're going to need connections. And I don't even think that's just a music industry thing. Let me take a quick second to say, if you're an artist trying to blow your music up, or if you're a manager, a music professional in general, trying to help an artist blow their music up, I have something that's a game changer for you. And it's completely free. As you may know, we've helped multiple artists go from zero to hundreds of thousands of streams. We've helped multiple artists go from hundreds of thousands to millions of streams, chart on Billboard, go viral, all of that stuff. And we've now made the way we've branded multiple artists and helped them go viral completely free, step by step in Brandman Network. All you have to do is check out brandmannetwork.com. You apply. It's completely free. But the thing is, we're not going to let everybody in forever. So the faster you apply, the better your chance of getting accepted. Brandmannetwork.com. Check it out. Back to the video. If you want to keep leveling up, if you want to keep, um, like, if you want to lessen the amount of money you got to spend, <laughs> you want to improve your ability to stay afloat at the level that you already are, it's just going to be about building connections and knowing people. So, like the, the more I look at the game and research just and, and get a vibe for different aspects of wealth and and growth in different industries, it's always like, OK, yeah, you know, every the, the smart people just have other people that they can fuck with. Because what they say, hey, if I'm the only rich person, I'm an op. If we all rich, you know what I mean? I got a squad <laughs> with me. All right. So that's I think one, it, it brings me down that path. But. Just to simplify it, relationships, man. Yeah. Uh, you can, just knowing some really dope people, just really dope people. It don't have to be this this super duper, I'm trying to trick the world type plan. You know a, a couple of dope people. They can get you in places that no one else can get in. Not even being super like, um, like strategic about it. It's just like, oh, yo, homie, like pull up. X, Y, and Z because y'all are cool and then all these other people happen to be there because they're your friends and mm -hmm. just like serendipitously other things happen. A lot of stuff happens like that, right? Yeah, yeah. Like that, I mean, that's like the, the secret part. Well, I guess it's not really secret but like the hard to quantify skill in the industry, right? Like how, yes. how lucky are you or how often are you able to put yourself in those situations um, which is usually much easier to do for artists because artists, y'all can always Use the whole creativity, you know what I'm saying? I like your art, you like my art thing to get into the room that I think makes yeah. it harder sometimes for like people wanting to be like business professionals. But then on the opposite, I can see sometimes it's easier for us because we have a thing that we can offer. We can be like, hey, like mm -hmm. invite me here because I can do something for you. It's not, it's not abstract on what I can do for you. Yep. It's very concrete. Um, but I do think that's a very underrated superpower is making friends in the industry, getting yourself in, in, in rooms with certain people not even just because you think the art itself is going to be super amazing, right, or, or groundbreaking, but just because, like, hey, you realize this person has a network that could benefit me in some way, and maybe I also have a network or some skill set that could benefit them in some way. And, you know, the industry is small. Like, it, it, a lot. what I've learned just going through the music industry is a lot of times people you want to get in contact with really are, like, one introduction away from somebody that you might already know or kind of know, mm -hmm. right? Um, so then it just becomes about uh, how many friends am I making that are going to vouch for me in front of people that might hear about me from three or four different other spaces. So that way the vouching is a little bit stronger um, and just like my name spreads out a lot quicker, right? Or I, or I get in front of these people who do make these magical moments happen for me a lot faster. Um, so that's how I look at it. But I mean, it's dope to see. Like I said, that I think a lot of our, those SoundCloud rappers at the time were getting that industry plant label. Um, when really they just were people that were just made friends with other artists. You know what I'm saying? In some way, shape, or another. And it really, it really was the artists like helping each other pop off. It was, it wasn't really like industry people like that. You know, like I think that was probably around the times where we started to be able to publicly see like artists like clicking up together. You know what I'm saying? Like off the internet and stuff because 
socials were, were becoming a lot more powerful. You were seeing a lot of SoundCloud artists start to click up and, and things like that. So we got to like see that happen in real time. Like, oh, this artist knows this artist. And then it makes sense on why this artist got this look in Atlanta, right? Like he was cool with this yeah. underground Atlanta rapper this whole time that had you know whatever type of pull out there. So I think that era was when we started to be able to like see it, see the lines because you could you could see them post a picture with somebody and then go look at everybody tagged in the picture and you could draw the, the conclusions right uh, and, yeah, and, and put the line together. Um, so for like now today, I don't think that's not that's not a surprise now. It's like it's no surprise to sometimes learn like oh this artist was friends with this other artist way before they started popping off. It's like no that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Like they got somebody got you in the game. So you know shout out to, to Post Malone for um, being. Not early, because I don't feel like he was he wasn't the first. You know, maybe not early. I don't know the word I'm looking for. Um ahead of his his tribe, maybe. <laughs> I don't even know if I can say that. They don't feel right saying it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to say there. I don't have any rebuttal and I don't have any <laughs> clarification either. I'm a I'm gonna just let that one rock.